Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here The voice of hardcore boxing Well I must be, because it says on there doesn't it? <laughs> uh, I put a, a tweet out uh, A couple of weeks ago, but a week and a half ago if you look and I said Anybody got any questions, send them in, put your name and where you're from and send them in and uh, I'll read them out. Now I said I'd pick first 50 but we've actually had the second most that we've ever had actually in doing it. 70, 71 questions and nearly all of them said where they're from and all that so that's good isn't it. Uh, Apart from a couple, uh, so I'm just going to do them all. It's uh, Tuesday today, the second of July, and this video is probably going to go out next Wednesday because Nicola is on holiday, sunning herself. So. It's not stuff that needs to go out straight away. There has been stuff that's going to be going out this week and that's set to come out. So there's still stuff to watch, but because it's a questions thing, it's not some. It's important, is it really? But it uh, it'll be going out next week. So, but well, you'll know when you're reading it. But like I said, so all them people who sent the questions in, I want to thank you very much from. Alison in Leeds, right the way through to Mark Sidall, who didn't put where they were from, but he's a, he emails all the time. Uh, I don't know what your Twitter handle is, Mark, or anything like that, or if you, or even half of these people don't. Some of them have same spelling mistakes on different emails, so I don't know, but anyway, we've, we've done all the questions. And we've got them all out. Uh, I could do a printer company, really, uh, but it is what it is. So I've done the best I can over the last ten days, getting them, getting them down and ready to uh, to start. So a quick sip of this. When we get done today, and we're for a game of snooker. Some of my mates. Go play golf, don't they? But I like a game of snooker. Seven quid a bleeding hour, it's a con. Seven quid an hour, and Nicholas got a table at home, miles away. It's not good, that is it. Don't play me on it since I beat her. Let's put the old bins on. And, uh, it's about time I bought a, a beaker that doesn't leak. I don't like my new socks. Cool, aren't they? Uh, right then. Porky, just how big are your balls of late with the videos you have been doing from Alison and Leeds? Uh, Hmm. Just how big are my balls of light? I don't know really. I just tell it as I see it. I am pretty. I don't know. People can say controversial. Uh, somebody said to me over there, "You've got a bit of front to say that you're you're very opinionated and it's boxing. Don't anybody ever give you an hard time?" No, you mainly not really. No, because. Boxers are disciplined people, aren't they? They know when, look, a boxer, if a boxer's saying he's this and that, and pe people know if he is or he isn't, 
it's just one of them things in it people know if he is or he isn't but uh, but no uh, no they don't uh, Remember that front shot. Uh, milk, aren't we on? Uh, now, boxing, right? It's one of them sports where boxers are regimented, and if anybody gives an opinion on it, they can get offended, can't they? Like Robbie Barrett, who beat Scott Cardell, it's Steffi Bullfighter, he's retired now, Robbie. He didn't like the fact that I said. Lewis Ritson stops him. I said, Lewis Ritson knocks him out. So obviously somebody in his gym went and told him and he, he didn't like it. But when he was seeing me, he went, hey, all right, poor kiss. Yeah, I'm all right. But I heard that he didn't like that. So he had his chance to pull me. And I would have said, well, it's my opinion. I think that Lewis Ritson stops you. And he did, didn't he? Nothing against Robbie Barrett. I thought that... He had a bit of luck in his fight against Scott Cardo and he got a British title but he lost it straight away didn't he? I knew he overachieved with the British title and I know that Lewis Ritson had beat him. That was my opinion, I put my money on it. I won a fair bit of money on it by a knockout as well. I didn't predict the, predict the round but you know you hear things don't you in, in the boxing industry and I'd be a fool if I'd heard something and I wasn't going to capitalise on it. And I heard that he overachieved. Don't mean to take anything away from him. He's a good fighter. He's a nice person. He's always been respectful to me when I see him. But that's just one instance. One instance where I've said that so-and-so beats so-and-so. You won't get that from Coogan Cassius, will you? He's had splinters in his arse for the last 10 years. They want to be everybody's mate, don't they? I'm not after being everybody's mate. If you're in my phone, on my WhatsApp, you're my mate. If you're not, you're not a mate of mine. So I've got enough mates, I don't want any more. I'm not, in, I'm not doing what I'm doing with, with this channel and doing things with any option to make mates with anybody. There's no mates in boxing, no backstabbers. All right, you might make 10% of the people you meet might be genuine, all the rest of them. I'll say hello shake your hand and then when you're gone they'll stab you in it back whether Robbie Barrett's done that to me or not I don't know I don't know him who fucking cares well that's just one instance where I said he don't beat Ritson and maybe people in his gym didn't like that but I don't see Steffi I didn't see Steffi Bull putting his bets out on social media saying he backed Robbie Barrett to beat Ritson, I didn't see that, so, but who knows, who knows, so, but it is what it is, isn't it? but that's just one instance, if people don't like it, tough, my channel's hard hitting, I've said some things recently that mates aren't liked, I know for the fact that it didn't go down well that I said that you refuse his opponent, Chris Norred, was a shocker, what am I supposed to do? So he's uh, dressed him up like they dressed Tom Swartz up. Fucking hell. Am I going to do that? Of course I'm not going to, am I? I'm just going to tell it as I see it. If anybody says that I don't tell it as I see it, point it out in emails to me. Or come on channel and say your bit. Alright. Question two. Have a look. Gonna take ages this. Question two, Porky, do you feel you was disrespectful to Tom Swartz before and after the Fury fight in Las Vegas? As Tom was WBO number two and highly rated. Jim Featherbank in London. Were I disrespectful? No. Where did Tom Swartz? Uh, come from to be a number do, number do, number two in WBO. Wh wh where? <laughs> where? 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 When were he ranked number eight or number ten? When? Can then somebody show me proof that 
he were even in the rankings. And who did he beat to move up to number two? Well, we don't have to get his box back up, do we? But who did Tom Swartz beat who was a world contender to put him in a position to be WBO, a Frank Warren favoured organisation, WBO number two ranked? Who did Tom Swartz beat? If that's disrespectful, Jesus. So I'm sorry, Jim, but. Tom Swartz was what I call a gimme fight for Tyson Fury. People can say I'm a hater, I'm not, I'm a realist. That fight was a gimme fight for Tyson Fury. Tom Swartz were knocked back for Dave Allen. There you go. Knocked back for Dave Allen a year ago. That was about that one. And he's just fought the Laniel champion. I'm just saying it as I see it. No. Fury power! Fury power! They'll not like it though, will they? But it is what it is, isn't it? If they don't like it, lump it. They're not paying my bills, are they? They're going to buy me my house? No. So. Number three, Porky. You said Josh Warrington beat Kid Galahad by three rounds. He never. He lost by two rounds. Also, you said Kid Galahad's first name is Abdullah. <laughs> Not Barry, you're a racist. Also, Josh Warrington is crap from Imran in Sheffield. Right, good old Imran. Right, first of all, I need to be driving glasses on. First of all, I thought Josh Warrington beat Kid Galahad. Kid Galahad's right, he's not there to be it, is he? He came to stink the place out. He stunk Leeds out, in fact, that night. It was worse than any fart spray or stink bomb you can get off the internet. He stunk the joint out. He didn't want to engage. Josh wanted and wanted a tear up. He stunk the joint out. He did an Andre Ward. He, tried, he did an Andre Ward move. On Carl, Fr what he did on C to Carl Froch, stunk the place out. That's what he did. But Carl Froch was fighting in America, not Nottingham. Stunk it out. It reeked. It reeked of diarrhea. That's what it stunk of. It stunk of Galahad's di diarrhea. If Galahad don't like it, lump it. That style is awful. That Ingle style. They call it the Ingle style because they try to cash in on things, but it's an awful style, isn't it? Tell me a fighter from that gym who you've, apart from Nazim Ahmed, who you've said, I'm going to go watch that fight tonight. Because when Naz fought, everybody wanted to watch him, me included. But what other fighter from that gym would you want to go watch? Which one? A purist would want to watch Ryan Rhodes because he were a technician. But the rest of them, Kel Brook, a technician. But there's got to be for the right person on it. But does anybody really like the Galahad style? The Bomber Graham style? The Johnny Nelson style? Did anybody like them styles? Did anybody like the Glyn Rhodes style? And he's my pal. No. Nobody liked the styles, did they? None of them sold tickets. None. Glyn sold a few, but none of the rest of them did. They didn't sell tickets. Johnny Nelson against Carlos de Leon. He stunk Sheffield out that night. Ask Barry Hearn. Galahad stunk place out. Junior Witter stunk more arenas out than a skunk. That's why he didn't get the Hatton fight. The Ingle style is old and tired, and it needs to be outlawed they need to have their own styles don't they because what they're teaching them is awful it's awful oh they called Johnny Nelson the entertainer that was a slight dig actually because he wasn't an entertainer Galahad's style is awful it's and he doesn't sell himself outside the ring very well does he so I think he's backed at drawing board but I only see him fighting on, on shows that are abroad or as the away opponent. 
Galahad, some people can say he should have won the fight. I didn't have him winning the fight. But I'm biased and I like Josh Warrington. And I wanted Josh to win because I like him. So maybe I'm biased. So take my opinion out. Let's say Kid Galahad won. We didn't get the decision, did he? Did he win? Let's say he won by one round. Why didn't he get the decision? Why? He didn't get the decision because he were in Leeds. Why was he in Leeds? Because his promoter didn't win the purse bid. The biggest promoter in the country didn't win the purse bid. I'm hearing right. The biggest promoter in the country who's got billions of pounds, so he says, didn't win the purse bid. Frank Warren won the purse bid. So he put the fight on in Leeds. But if Eddie had won the purse bid, he'd have put the fight on in Leeds. So, but Eddie would, have, Eddie would have had the coolest then of it being his show. Frank had the coolest, it was Frank's show. Boxing shouldn't go like that, but it often does in close fights. Frank Warren's show. Howard Foster's and Eddie Hearn, man. He get it to Galahad. The other two get it to Josh Warrington, didn't they? So, it is what it is. If he'd have sold more tickets, he might have had it in Sheffield, but he didn't, did he? So that's that. So he got beat. Get over it, Imran. Number four, Porky. Why do you say that Josh, Joshua, hangers on are hangers on? And also, how do you know they are? They are just there to be his mates. And also, aren't you a Dennis Hobson groupie? Because he is wealthy. I think you're a hanger on as well. From Tom in Lincoln. Steve-O's mate. Uh, look, this is how I look at it, right? This is how I look at it. I always base everything around Carl Froch or Clinton Woods because I know them well. They didn't have entourages like Joshua. Why do you need all them people around you? When you've got all them people around you, they want feeding. They want clothing. So you've got to get them tracksuits and all that. They want feeding, they want putting up in hotels, they want flying about, and they're probably going to want paying. Why? Did Clinton or Carl Frotch have people to tell him when to eat and sleep and fart? No. He doesn't need all that many people around him. Just looks bad, doesn't it? They're all like cheerleaders, aren't they? Geeing him up and all that. Get rid of them. Cut them loose. Tell them it's severance pay. Tell them to take the train. The night train back to Watford, get them to do what they were doing, just because they're your mates, you don't need to give them, give them jobs. See this is what happens with boxers, people play on them heartstrings with boxers and boxers need to be like Carl Froch. People play on heartstrings with Carl Froch, you're not getting a penny out of him, not a penny. Ask his family, you're not getting a penny, that's just how he is, regimented. If you want it, you've got to earn it, right? Boxers need to be frivolous with the money. Stop these hangers on that are backslapping you. All right, get rid of the backslappers. Get rid of them. It's no good. You don't see Josh Whale with an entourage when he was British champion and world ranked. You didn't see Liam Cameron with it. So why do these need it? Does it make you a better fighter? No, it just adds more pressure. Get rid of the hangers on. Uh, as regards Tom from Lincoln, Steve O's mate, me uh, being a, a Denny Sobson hanger on and a groupie, uh, <laughs> everybody knows how I met Dennis. I went to meet his dad over four years ago. Uh, somebody recommended I go meet his dad, not Dennis, I didn't even go to meet Dennis, I went to meet his dad, and it was his dad who got me and my Dennis, so, as regards for me being a groupie, I very much doubt I'm a groupie, I'm my own man, aren't I? I'm my own man, I don't take a penny out of Dennis out at boxing, I might earn with Dennis for other things, but not with boxing, so, I know being a groupie, and, um, Many a time I go out with Dennis and I pick tabs up in restaurants. Ask any of my pals. Never been an hanger on, never been. Never was, never will. So, my own person. And I was never an hanger on when I used to 
see more of Carl Frotch. We'll never run hang around with him. I don't believe in any of that. No. Nope. So. Let's have a look. Five, Porky, you said Tom Dallas is known as Tom Plankerwood Dallas. I don't think that's fair as it makes Tom sound like he's a Plankerwood and daft Porky, you fat druggie from Tina in Lowestoft. <laughs> this is what I've put with. Uh, it wasn't me that said Tom Plank. Tom Dallas was a Plankerwood. It was Tyson Fury who said it in an interview many years ago. And uh, let me just point out that the reason Tyson said it is probably because, and this is a true story, Tom Dallas uh, tried to bump start an automatic car. So there you go. Is that somebody who's at Planker Wood? Have a think about that, will you? Automatic and bump starting it because battery's flat. So I think it was David Price that were pushing the car as well. And note what happening. Because it's an automatic, Tom. You plank of wood. Porky, I've noticed you're slipping in the odd. Non-boxing video of late. Why are you doing this? And have you any plans to get Stig on live again in the Derby Arms or in your office in Sheffield? Uh, yeah, we are doing odd video other than boxing. I do it because I want to do something different with the channel. You know, it's our channel. We do what we want to do, me and Nicola with it. Uh, so, yeah. So, boxing's not the be and end all, is it? There is other things in life. And... Uh, you know, I, it's not only me, I have to keep happy with channel, so... But, like I said, we are doing different things with channel, but boxing content is the main focus. But yeah, there is things lined up, so... And as regards uh, having Stig on again, live, uh, if Stig wants to come on channel, he can come on channel. If you don't want to come on, you don't have to come on, does it? My life ain't going to alter. If Stig don't come on, is it? I'm not gonna all of a sudden end up on Skid Row. You know what I mean? So if Stig don't come on, but Stig's good, good banter. You know, he can take a joke, he can have a laugh. You know, he's big-hearted. You know, but you know, Stig, Stig, isn't he? He's one of a kind. But uh, but we're gonna, we could have Stig on, couldn't we? Talking about taxes, he's a bit of an expert in taxes, isn't he? So instead of box, we could do a non-boxing video with Steve. Number seven, Porky. Why did Tony Bell you ring up Dennis Hobson slagging you off? Was it because he didn't like your videos of late? Terry in Liverpool. Oh, and that's both questions. I wonder why that didn't have one at the bottom. So the Stig question and the non-boxing ones from Terry in Liverpool and this one is Why did Tony Bell you ring Dennis up? Uh, I think I've mentioned this before I did a video didn't I saying that Tony Bell you would not beat a champion and that he should fight Usyk he did fight Usyk so fair enough but that was his pension fight wasn't it and he's still retired not beating a champion so sorry about that Terry Lack Number eight, Porky, why do you always wear Lacoste polo tops all the time and night trainers, Joan in Pontefract? There you go, Under Armour. And, yeah, I've got Nike on today. I don't know, I like, I like night trainers. I, were, un, I wasn't lucky enough to have them when I was a kid. And uh, other kids did have them, and I said, oh, when, I, when I'm... When I'm older and you know things are going all right for me, I'm gonna have about 30 pair of night trainers, and I have done. So I'm fortunate, aren't I? I suppose, but I don't know. I like night trainers, don't I? I've got other mates, but I just like Nike uh, and Lacoste ones. I prefer to wear them with jeans, but uh, I like Lacoste tops. 
they've been in fashion since 60s Lacoste tops haven't they and they haven't changed have they there's still a two button or a three at top and that's it the style never changes it's always in fashion so whereas other stuff that I've bought over the years it goes out of fashion doesn't it but then that sort of stuff don't does it so so they're all right. I like them Ralph Lauren polo tops as well, they're nice as well, but I think I've only got one of them. But I prefer the Lacoste ones, I like crocodiles, don't I? So, Porky, is Robin Reed a good night out and does he pull loads of chicks? As I once saw him in a porn movie years ago, <laughs> Diane in Red Car. I bet you did Diane, didn't you? Uh, yeah, Robin Reed's a good night out. Uh, it's a myth that Robin Reed goes out there and chats loads of birds up and he's a king of club land and all that. It's a myth. He's not like that at all. He's, uh, he's just not like that. He doesn't even drink. Robin Reed doesn't drink. So I don't... And he still weighs 168 pound. You see, he weighs 168 pound, 5 foot 9, and keeps his set in fantastic shape and doesn't drink and he doesn't go clubbing and... Robin will be watching this, so Robin, I've got it out for you, mate. Uh, Robin Reed doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't drink and he doesn't pull loads of chicks and all that. Obviously, I have been, I've been, I had into a, I took Rob, sorry, I met Robin Reed. I, I rung him up and asked him to come to one of Dennis's shows, actually, a Liam Cameron fight, and he came and. People didn't make a fuss over him. Uh, and I think Michelle in Dennis's office and her friend who were at the show, I think they thought Robin were a nice person and all that. <laughs> Michelle blushing now. But uh, but now it's all a myth that Robin uh, was out chatting loads of birds up and that. A porno is different, isn't it? If somebody's going to offer you. I'm not going to say how much, but if somebody's going to offer you X amount to go be in a porn film and, and, and you know, give a nice bird one, with a, obviously you're going to be wrapped up, aren't you? But And you're going to get paid money for it, you're going to take it, aren't you? So, so you're not going to knock that back, eh? It's going to enhance your profile. Uh, although I know he's a bit embarrassed about it now, but it is what it is, isn't it? So... So don't be getting, uh, you have to cross your legs, Diane. Number 10, Porky. What's your top three TV series of all time and do you own the box sets? Trevor in Lancaster. <sighs> right, uh, don't mean to be rude there, Trev. Top three box sets. Sopranos. Uh, there's another one as well, but I forgot what it's called. Dallas, big fan of big fan of Dallas, and Brotherhood is it? One with a kid called Michael. His brother's a politician. He's a criminal. They live in out Boston way, is it? But he's a Liverpool actor playing an American. I like that box set. I like that series. I think that's about it, really. Just them three, I think. Sopranos and Dallas are classics, aren't they? Number 11, Porky. Did you ever rate David A as a boxer? If so, why do you constantly dig him out when he... Why did you constantly dig him out when he came back? Corey in London. Uh, David A, he, he had six wins over... over world champions. Uh, Marvin Agler and Sugar Ray Leonard had seven, so David A will go in Hall of Fame. What, uh, David A was shot to bits after he lost to Vladimir, everybody in the boxing industry knew that. Uh, he couldn't pull the trigger no more. He couldn't pull the trigger. And his body was breaking down all the time. They held him together by glue to fight Vladimir. So, that's just how it is. Uh, he should have never have had them two pay-per-views against 
Tony Bellew. He couldn't do the camps. He couldn't do the camps for the Tyson Fury two pull outs. But he came back for money, didn't he, after his divorce. He managed to get two fights for a million pound a fight on Dave's channel, a comedy channel. Then he got the two the, the Bellew fight.